In this video, we're going to focus on how MIDI routing works within Studio One 3 using Contact. I've gotten a question several times actually, and so just had a chance to uh, attack this question and showing you guys how this works. Now, this, there are several ways you can do what I'm about to show you. You know, by no means this is the only way, but when you're using Contact, this would be the easiest route. For someone like a beginner and doesn't understand all of the routing situation that, that that comes in play in the back in the background, like this for instance, getting everything to route you know to a specific channel. But for someone who just you know, contact is one of those things where you can actually load up to sixteen instruments, and there are some things I want you to look after. So basically, um, this is one channel here. Okay, so even even if we look at the the main the main window here, I'm going to delete this this channel here. All right, so as you can see, also in the mixer window, it's only one, and this is the corresponding here in the in the in the the range window in here in the mixer. Okay, so what we're going to do here is we're going to pull up contact here, and we're going to just start dragging some instruments. And as you can see, everything lives on the side here, the left side, the browser window. And I'm going to go for factory, library. Um, I don't know. Let's come out of there. Let's go for, I love strings. So let's come out of here, completely go to uh, orchestral and VSL strings. And we can probably start off with some string ensembles. You can double click on it and it'll automatically pull up here. And so the things that we are paying attention to is the MIDI channel that it corresponds to. MIDI channel one. This is what it says here. MIDI channel one. All right. And as you can see here, it also says MIDI channel one. Now, this is the thing. Now, let's 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 record something. Let's go staccato. Something like that. Let's, of course, speed the, the, the tempo. Let's make it uh, 110. Why not? Bring this back some. All right, so let's quantize that just a tad bit. Everything did not. Let's make this eighth notes. Let's highlight them all. let's make this a loop let's turn this loop on and this note this is bothering me it's too loud i can go ahead and duplicate this now the problem is you have to pay attention once you duplicate this it still says channel one meaning that you're still accessing the same exact instrument you haven't did anything different Right? Two, three, four. So it's accessing the same instrument both times, even though you you split them up. You know what I mean? So sometimes when I'm working, you know, doing piano work or whatever, I may have sustain coming in on the first one here. You know, act, you know, you know, playing the chords using my sustain pedal and, you know, the, the sustain information will pop up here. And I may be doing something, you know, like doing something in the higher register where I don't want to, you know, ag access or, you know, be uh, uh, caught up in the sustain information. So I'll like duplicate and do it on the same channel. That way this will have sustain information on there or whatever automation. And then this one will have just whatever I'm doing separately from there, you know, which is pretty cool. But keep in mind, you're still working off that one instrument, the same instrument. Now, if you want to work off of something else, say like you want to bring in another, another instrument. Let's double click here. Now, keep in mind, any instrument that you that you access or any new instrument that you that you load into the contact here it will automatically route to the next channel 
So say, for instance, we duplicate that again. Again, you have to pay attention to the channel here. This still says channel one. Now I want to go to channel two. Two, three, four. Let's make it move a little more. I like the way it sounds. Let's come in, Dallas, and let's uh, say something like that. I'm just feeling it a little bit more. <laughs> right so say that's the deal now i can go in and add another instrument here inside of the, the, the contact and the whole reason why why i would do this is, is to avoid adding another instrument another instance of contact because i'm telling you once you start doing that you will really run the risk of um c computer cpu hog and then you will be you know you know it's, it that's just bad for your computer it will slow you down and we can actually see what's going on you see this as i lay on that cello if we can see that i'm already at 22 percent you see our cpu is already jumping so this is just to show you that um contact is a is a big it's a big deal then what i will do here is highlight them all and bounce them in place and what studio one is doing is smart enough to say hey you took three different channels or three different regions and i'm gonna bounce them in you know three different channels so here's our three different channels we just bounced down in place so now we have wave that we're working with and what studio one did was it muted these channels right away so now when we play them look check out our our cpu here it's running at 10 percent versus the 25 percent okay so what we're gonna do is bring this reverb here boom add it there and i just sent it to a reverb and this is just, this is me adding it to the actual bus channel itself, and this is the reverb that I that I sent it to, right? And control how much I send to the reverb, right? And that's pretty much how I I usually do anything that I'm doing when I'm composing anything. I'll, I'll do things that way because I do understand that when you are working inside of um, these instruments here, these instruments are computer hogs here. Also, another thing you could do, um, I showed this before in one of my other videos, but you can also uh, access the bounce in place um, where it will allow you to bounce down the region and you can keep the MIDI information within um, the actual the actual uh, wave file, which is pretty dope. So as you can see, what happened was it took this track and as you saw that it, it gave me an option as to the length, the tail end of it, you know, the 30 seconds. So I, I left it at 30 seconds and you can see here. So we, if we zoom in, we can see that the MIDI information is still, it still exists back here in the background. And the thing about this is that's cool is uh, even though this is an audio track, a lot of times, you know, when 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 we feel like we sure at that moment, you know, we good. We can get rid of the track. So we, 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 we we're not thinking about the track itself. But um, if we need it back, you know, we want those notes back. I can go to my pool section and actually pull the MIDI information. That, that I have because it's also saving me the information here and then I can always pull that into the track itself and what it's going to do here is create a whole nother instrument track with this information and I just have to tell it I have to give it an instrument you know and I can even you know say I wanted to trigger the instrument here <laughs> again doing it this way 
you know, even though all of my instruments was up here, you know, as we first started out, again, anytime you have an instrument channel, you can always tell it where to go. First of all, you tell it where to go here. You pick an instrument, and then you select the, the channel where you want to go, all the way up to 16. You know what I'm saying? And then when you hit this icon here, you can see. You know what I'm saying? And there you go. <laughs> I hope that was helpful, guys. If you guys have any questions about what I just showed you in this video, please feel free to comment below as usual. All right. My name is Ella. Music is art. You are the artist. Paint your picture.